Uh, bad investigators take many forms, like they like to jump to conclusions, and uh, a lot of times they ask why before they gather the right information. Uh, and a lot of times also they don't dig deep enough into what exactly is causing their problems. Uh, so these are just a few of the characteristics that we see of investigators that are having problems. I, I hate calling them bad investigators, but investigators that could be better. But the good news is, they don't have to stay bad investigators. We're going to be talking over the next few weeks about some traits of what make great root cause analysis investigators and facilitators. I'm Benna Dorch with System Improvements. I'm an implementation strategist and my co-host Ken Reed is vice president and he has been the instructor and has worked with thousands of investigators around the world. So you've kind of like um, seen the good and the not so good. We've seen all kinds of different op opportunities here for instructors and, and investigators. Uh, so uh, uh, we also today, to help us out with this, we have Chris Valley with us. Uh, How are you all doing today? Uh, Chris has uh, also been with us uh, about 10 years, I believe. Is that right, Chris? About yes. 10 years? And, uh, and he's also seen a lot of different opportunities for investigators, both good characteristics and bad characteristics. So he's going to help us out to, to maybe explain some of that for us. So between the two of you, you've kind of seen it all. We've seen I'm, I'm everything. Every kind of investigator that there is. <laughs> well, this series is based on, and it's probably going to take about three different um, sessions probably to get through what yeah, we want so. to talk about, but it's based on an article that was written by the co-creator Taproot and president of system improvements, Mark Paradise, called The Seven Traits of What Makes a Great Root Cause Analysis Facilitator. And so if you think you're a great facilitator, you know, listen in. You might find out there's some things that you can do a little bit better. I don't know. We can all improve some. We can all uh, do it. We can all improve. Yep. And if you don't think you're a very good uh, facilitator, you're considered, what, bad, worst, <laughs> mediocre, <laughs> I guess. We're going to use a few of those words, so don't take offense. Listen in so we can help you maybe grow, and so in the future you can be bringing your A game to your investigations. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, according to the article, the first, well, the number one on that list of traits is that great root cause analysis facilitators do not jump to conclusions. That's right. That's a, that's a problem we see with a lot of investigations is uh, uh, the facilitator, facilitator thinks he already knows all the, all the answers and he jumps, jumps ahead to, to the answers before we've actually gotten the right information. So, so jumping to conclusions oftentimes is an issue and mm -hmm. uh, something that we try to, try to avoid as to we're do. doing it. Easy to do, very easy to do. Chris Valley's now joining us. Thank you, Chris, for coming and helping us with this topic. Thank you for inviting me. In your area of ex years of experience, Chris, um, what do you see that the best inve investigators do to try to not jump to conclusions? The, the first case is you can't armchair investigate. You can't do it from the desk. You gotta go out and look. You gotta go where the problem occurred. And so the first thing you have to do is not make any assumptions. You gotta go out there, you gotta see what's going on, you gotta talk to the people. You can't assume that what's happened in the past happened today. And that's one of the biggest things is there's a time to quickly make decisions and that's if you're trying to save people, stabilize the environment. But that's not root cause analysis, that's not investigation. Investigation is figuring out what happened and then letting the evidence guide you. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I, I agree completely on that. So when you're talking about evidence, what, what kinds of evidence are we talking about when, you, when you're talking about letting the evidence guide your investigation? Well, some of the first evidence is interviewing. You want a good cognitive interview. Sometimes you can't go out there first, so you've got to make sure that the people who collect the information get it as, as, as objectively as possible. They interview properly. They document it. That's the first thing. Each interview and statement also has to be validated with good physical evidence. It could be a computer printout. It could be how a machine was running. Mm. It could be interview statements uh, that were collected previously to the first ones. It could also be physical evidence that was collected on the site and not thrown away. So everything, even the first responders, that information has to be collected. Yeah, I, I got that and I understand. And, and that kind of rolls back to where we started with, was, uh, you know, a lot of times investigators think they know everything to, uh, right off the top. We don't all know everything. We don't know everything We yet. don't. So that, that evidence collection is pretty critical to the, to the process. Well, thank you, Chris, for helping us discuss that jumping to conclusions. Um, do you have time to stay around for one more topic? Sure, that, that'd be awesome. 
All right, well, the next trait of a great interviewer is they strive to understand what before why. Right, right. And what, what, what do bad investigators do there, yeah. Ken? It seems like pretty obvious that, hey, I need to know what happened before yeah. I understand why the problems occurred. And yet it's amazing how many times we see companies and investigators um, start off with the data they think they have and then start asking questions. Why, why, why? And uh, uh, that's really not the way to start an investigation. Yeah. It, you really got to start with the what before you get to the why. It kind of puts people on the defensive and it, it can, can yeah. kind of compromise the investigation a little bit. It sure can. Yeah, sure um, can. Chris, uh, what, do the, what, do the, what do the really good interviewers do, the investigators do? Well, the first thing is, is if you're interviewing people, you're collecting information, you, you just want to get what happened to the best of their ability. You're not trying to brainstorm. You're not trying to guess. You're not trying to even solve it yet. Just get as good as you can at what. And, and I really want to know what happened at the very beginning of the day. I want to know what happened as a person was performing the task where the issue occurred. And then based on that, I can then put all that other information that we collected and say, okay, is what they thought happened happened? Is it supported by information? And we really want to dig down and, and we, we don't want to interrogate people. We want to let them talk. We want them to like go forward and then we'll piece it all together after the fact. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I, I, I know what that's like sometimes when you start in, in an interview with somebody. Um, they understand the what questions. You know, what happened? Can you tell me a little bit what was going on? But as soon as you start asking why, why did you do that? Why did they, why did you not follow the procedure? I want to leave. Yeah, it, 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 it puts, it puts <laughs> I don't want to answer your questions. <laughs> it puts people on the defensive. It feels right. like an interrogation. Yeah. So that's exactly what Chris was talking about, and, and I agree 100% on that. Yeah. All right, well, guys, I really enjoyed that conversation about those first two traits. Um, thank you, Chris, for joining us today. And for those watching, thank you for joining us. We're going to do some more of these traits over the next few weeks. So if you feel like this is something that will help you, please uh, join us. Um, comment below. Let us know your thoughts. Yeah, just let us know uh, what, what we can do to help you succeed. And hopefully a, a lot of these hints that you're going to be seeing and these tips on specifically these investigator traits uh, will help make you a much better investigator. Um, helps make me a better investigator, and I'm hoping it, it does the same for you. Oh, you know what? I forgot. What's that? I haven't, I haven't asked yet. <laughs> I haven't asked permission yet, but I'm going to try. So if you stick with us um, in a few weeks, when we wind this up, I'm going to try to get Mark Paradise himself to come in here Excellent. and get us some little gold nuggets of wisdom that can help you become a great investigator. Perfect. So just keep tuning in, and uh, fingers crossed I can make that happen. So. Sounds great. Thank you for awesome. joining us. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Bye-bye.